Hi, how's it going everybody? So in this video, I'll be going over some tips and tricks on how you can customize your GNOME desktop. Now for the past few years, I've just been happy with the default desktop. I didn't even change the desktop background and I would only make changes for accessibility reasons. Um, changing the font sizes and um, dark mode. I, I like dark mode. But uh, back in the day, I used to like, you know, have Compares Fusion and I'd have my nice um, 3D desktop and wobbly windows and all sorts of things. I'm thinking, why did I stop doing that sort of thing? I mean, it made using my computer a lot more fun. So I decided recently I'm going to start customizing my desktop again. Well, first I'll show you my desktop, and then I'll show you the various tools and stuff I use to set this up. So, as you can see, I have a animated desktop, and all my my shell is transparent and customized, as is my GTK theme. So there is two different applications I'd like to show for wallpapers. And the first one I'd like to show is called Coma Rebri. So we can easily switch between wallpapers. We can have live wallpapers for this one. And we can, conf when you create a wallpaper, you can actually configure whether you want it to show the time or not. Okay, to create a new wallpaper, first we will, you need to download a video file or create a video file. And we'll just create a thumbnail for it by going into VLC player and going into video here and go take snapshot. We'll go and we'll grab that file now, put it in the same location as the um, video files. Then we'll go to the wallpaper creator, give it a name, select video, find your video file, select your thumbnail, go next, and I don't like displaying the time, I got the time up the top there. Okay, and once you're done it'll say to do this command. Now we can uh, change the wallpaper to the new one. There we go. Having a live wallpaper does have a little bit of a performance hit, but it just makes using the computer more fun, so why not? The second wallpaper application I'd like to demonstrate is called Variety. And what this does is, if I open it up here, it fetches random images from online sources or a folder, which you can configure, and it randomly changes your wallpaper every so often, which is also configurable. And this uses image magic, so you can do things such as, on each new image, display a random quote, which will be fetched from the internet. And you can make it display the time and things like that. And also because it's using image magic in the back end, you can do things such as you can say, I want all the background images to be grayscale. And what's really handy is if you don't like one of the images it fetched, you can click next. Just like that and go to the next one until you find one you like. The thing to bear in mind when fetching images from online sources is some of these sources collect metrics, so if you don't like that you might want to disable some of these. If you're going to start customizing your GNOME desktop, you'll definitely need a handy application called GNOME Tweaks, which you should be able to find in your distributions repository. GNOME Tweaks will allow you to make various changes to GNOME such as its appearance. Um, this GNOME Tweaks is also very handy to make changes for accessibility reasons as well. Um, it allows you to turn on and off GNOME extensions, change the fonts, 
mouse settings, startup applications, top bar settings, title bars, window settings, workspace settings, and so on and so forth. Now you may have noticed I've got quite a few GNOME extensions here. The easiest way to install GNOME extensions is to get a add-on for your web browser. I use Firefox and there's a GNOME Shell integration add-on. Now you'll also need this here which is called Chrome GNOME Shell. Now don't worry you don't need to install any Google Chrome stuff for this to work with the Firefox um, add-on. You should be able to find Chrome GNOME Shell in your distributions repository. Now once you've got that browser extension installed, you should be able to install extensions using your web browser. So we can go, for example, user themes here. I've already installed this. I just click this on button here. Then it'll ask you for permission to install that extension and it'll go ahead and install that extension, which you will then be able to find in GNOME Tweaks. You will find extensions for GNOME at extensions.gnome.org. There are lots of handy extensions for GNOME, so I suggest having a look through them to see if there's any that you might find useful. Here are some I found useful. The sound and sound input and output device chooser is very handy because I have lots of input and outputs for my audio. I've got a mixer here on my desk, I've got an HTC Vive up there, I've got a webcam there. So it's quite handy to be able to quickly just go up here and change my devices. So that's a handy extension. The suspend button, because most of the time I don't shut down this computer. I just put it on suspend. So it's much easier for me just to click, come here and click the suspend button. User themes allows you to change this shell extent this shell setting here which will change the appearance of your gnome shell it doesn't change the appearance of your gtk theme there's a difference which i'll go through soon so your shell theme is the appearance of this top bar here and all the menus that come down from it and the bottom dock here the gtk theme is the appearance of your applications Glassy GNOME makes your windows transparent. As you can see here, I can see through all my applications. Now you might be thinking, well, that's just for looks, it's just a gimmick. Well, no, actually, I found it quite useful to be able to see through applications sometimes to see the application behind it. So it does have a practical purpose as well. Now you also might be thinking, well, there are some applications I don't want to be able to see through such as my video editor, or when I'm watching a video, I don't want to see through the video, or when I'm editing photos, I don't want to be able to see through that. Well, you can change the settings for individual applications. If you look at the GNOME, Glassy GNOME GitHub page, you'll see code similar to this. So what I suggest you do, if you want to try out this extension, is create a simple shell script. You just put the code into a file here and it'll list all the applications that you don't want to be transparent. Now this first one here, 64, is 100% opacity. Now the first one is when the window is active, the second is when it's inactive. As you see here for OBS I said I don't care whether the window is active or inactive, I always want it to be 100% opacity. And every time you add a new application to that script, you just run that script and it will apply that setting. Now just like how you can install GNOME extensions using your browser, you can install GNOME shell themes and GTK3 themes using your browser as well. For that you'll need this OCS URL program. So you can go over here, download the package appropriate for your distribution. In my case it was this dev package and then I just installed it. Okay so now from either gnomelook.org or pling.com we can start installing gnome shell themes and gtk3 themes. So to do that there's an install button and the site's loading a little slow at the moment. 
then it will ask which application to open it with and we can say OCS the cool thing about GNOME and GTK3 is its theming is just CSS once the theme has been installed you can activate it in your GNOME tweaks just by choosing it in here Now if I go up here, as you see, my theme has been changed. Now I like the transparent one, so I'm going to keep the transparent one. And the same applies to your GTK3 themes. I'm going to keep it on Ultimate Dark. Because I really like that. So that was the basics of customizing GNOME. Hopefully some of you would have found some of this information informative. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching. See you later.